Nine twenty eight AM Tuesday, October tenth, twenty seventeen. <clears throat> I'm fresh out fresh out in the shower getting dressed. Now like that terrorist honky bitch been doing every fucking morning. I'm in the shower, motherfucker. That bitch ass motherfucker making it feel like I'm drowning while I'm taking a shower. I'm standing up. And the terrorist bitch doing it every morning since the first week of September. And remember, them bitches made me have a heart attack before that. That's why I filed my lawsuit. And you see the levels, don't you? Remember yesterday that terrorist bitch turned it down to all zeros. Yesterday, around about, what, 5 o'clock or so? When I stopped in to take a little break, watch Wendy Williams. Look at the levels. TV on, fan on, ceiling light on, computer on. See the levels? All that shit was on when that terrorist bitch turned it down to all zeros yesterday. Satisfaction guaranteed. Order now and we'll include our 24 page weight gain guidebook. A $19.99 value. Absolutely free. But that's not all. We'll also upgrade your order with brush processing. A $6.99 value. Absolutely free. That's right. Save over $25 when you place your order of CB1 now. I was married. I thought my accident was the worst thing in the whole world. My car was totaled. I went to the hospital. Didn't know what to do. I was 
Disconnected from all things that are utterly serious about the black community, disconnected from the community itself, um, disconnected from just all normal, regular people. Take the off the cuff of Mark Harvey, a Cleveland native, made on his radio show while joking with a listener from Flint, a city that is still suffering the ravages of a water crisis. The dude says to me, Cleveland ain't nothing, and Cleveland don't deserve nothing. So I said, What the hell? What are you for? He said, I'm from Flint. Now we in trash talk mode. So I said, oh man, you going to the ground wall. And it, it just blew up into this whole thing, man. I was like, I was demoralized because I was like, damn, that's not what this was. I was just talking trash to this one guy. But I apologize because it was not my intent. It's hard to pull it back up. You can't get it back. Looking back, if I had given it a moment of pause, if I wasn't in the moment, I would have said, okay, no jokes about the water, because people are suffering. But in the heat of the moment, it got out, and I couldn't get it back. Hey, that's one of my best friends. That's one, that's one of my best friends. That's one of my best friends. I couldn't get it. Let's go to another one. Trump. Harvey's harshest attacks came after meeting with Donald Trump. He was among a handful of blacks who had been invited to meet with the soon-to-be president. Many African Americans saw those who accepted the meeting as either selling out or being used by a man who had used race to win the White House. What do you have to lose? I suggested Harvey would have saved himself some grief had he told people before the meeting he'd been asked to sit down. Looking back, I wish I had said, I'm expecting to see a room full of people. It was just us. Me, Count, my buddy Greg Count. And then he called in his sister to take notes. And the first 20 minutes was totally congenial. So finally he looks at me and he goes, so Steve, what can I do for you? I said, well, you can't really do anything for me. I said, but I want to help you. And I was very honest with him. I said, I did not vote for you. I didn't want to think that I was a Trump supporter, but I was. I said, I want to help your new appointment to her, Dr. Ben Carson, with housing and urban development. And then I said, because I think I have a better shot at getting to these people than he did. Two minutes later, he had Ben Carson to his credit. I said, Dr. Carson and I talked, we agreed to meet. I said, I got to go in the and I got to address the meeting. He said, okay, then I share with them what we talked about up here. He said, sure, you got no problem. He said, thank you so much. He said, I'll go down with you. His whole staff took me, can't go down with you. He got on the elevator, he came down with me. We walked right up to the road. I'm standing there, first word out of his mouth, we gonna appeal in the place of Obama, and I'm standing. And if you look at the look on my face, you know, so, then what do you do? Did you feel me? Oh, man, I felt like, hold on, man, that ain't what we talked about. He shook hands and shook my hands and went upstairs. I went in there and I started telling you what I said. I did not get finished with the room. By the time I made my way to the car, I was a guitar, queen, a sellout. I was every negative Negro that I could have been. And I was stunned. I was stunned. 
the attacks were vicious. You don't think I would have missed. I'll show you. Mikey? Steve Harvey? Let me kick home. Who? Uncle Tom? Me? I'm going to sell you out for what? Okay. You don't even know what I said yesterday. You don't even know my own thing up there was for somebody less fortunate than you. But man. There are those who said Steve Harvey did this not to help us, but to elevate Steve Harvey's life, to make himself look better. What do you say to this? Well, how'd that work out? <laughs> What's the game in the me that they, they didn't like when you said he was a good guy, a congenial guy, I think is the word. They didn't like that. Well, he was congenial. But hey, guess what, though? You know, we hadn't came up with the travel thing in the we hadn't tried this idiotic thing to repeal and replace Obamacare, and we sure hadn't made these crazy remarks about Charlottesville yet. Now look, he done said some stuff on the campaign trail, I ain't agree with you. But what that got to do with me trying to get something done out of this deal for housing? The part that hurt me no end, I don't want to be real with you, man. The attack was so vicious for the black people. Damn, black people doing this to me. I mean, steady. And I'm telling you the real funky part. People I thought I was so called cool with. You understand? They just went hard, you know. Sitting on their ladies to talk about. People who have come to me in, in private and out of help. Them people right there who did not even have the facts just jumped on what was trending. That hurt me personally because, man, you know me. I knew I was in trouble with Bill O'Reilly. That's what I said. I'm in a lot of trouble right now. Do you feel the need at all now to heal wounds? There are some who still feel that you did the wrong thing. Well, I would say to this person right here, what would you do if you were in my place? If you have the sitting president President Obama transitioned to, I, I got letters, and the incoming president say, come and meet. If you're an intelligent and thinking person, what harm did I do in trying to go to do something for the next one? If you knew then what you know now about me, would you have to be? I don't know what he is right now. So how does that help? I didn't see it. The onslaught hasn't stopped. Recently, the gossip magazines have impugned his character. I was on the choir one time because I was a woman. I was a man in my pregnant wife. Now we're running the world culture and we're laundering money. We're under investigation by the FBI. And ain't nobody talk to us. Ain't nobody knocked on the door, rang the doorbell. We don't have a lawyer, nothing right here. Matter of fact, they know who I am. That you can find Steve Hart. It's, it's so below the belt, swipe, that it's really boring now. We get, and we just wrap ourselves up in Isaiah 54 17. No weapon form of resolution possible. These people can attack your family and say what they want to say. Because you know how it's done? They give a story to somebody, they pay them a little bit of money, and they make them sign an affidavit. So when you go to the squad and close the sewer, they say, we have a sign that today. Well, the person they have to sign that today before don't have a damn score. They just got the 500 or 1,000 that they paid them for the store. Like I told you in the beginning, that social media has made these homeless not a fun thing. Steve, in spite of all of this, the life that you have found is the life most people only get to dream about. Give me a sense about how you look at that. You know, man, you are right. I live a life that most people can only dream about. I'm living a life I never dreamed about. I didn't see this. I couldn't see it to this level. I wanted some big stuff to happen. I had no idea about this. You know, Ed, I can't believe it had to turn. Like, it's, it's so far away. 
even over what I deserve. I mean, look, I work hard. I got that. But I get that, though. This is a lot of grace and favor. God has given me an amazing amount of grace and faith. When we come back, one of Hollywood's bright new stars. It's extremely exciting. I feel like so much is happening at once. It's Golden Corral's all-new smokehouse. Choose from hidden smoke, beef, crispy, tender baby bag ribs, smoked chicken and turkey, all cooked low and slow on site. Smoke and bake. Golden Corral, your choice for food. The martial is sensational entertainment. Four stars, outstanding. One of the best movies of the year. It's more clean than the rabbit side food. This Friday, discover the one movie event that will inspire and have you cheer. The only way to get from the biggest smoke to break it down. The martial art is page 14. The Bizza Crossway vacuums and washes your floors at the same time. Dry messes, wet messes, it even works on area rugs. The multi-surface crossway releases just the right amount of clean water and Bizzle formula. The brush roll has microfibers that mop. And some